The next speaker will focus on the future of travel messaging. Rob Lawson joined Google to help evangelize the rich business messaging ecosystem through partnerships. Uh, Rob has been growing partnerships from both regional and global companies for 15 plus years and is known for his ability to create value, revenue, and growth. A citizen of both the US and the UK, Rob currently resides in San Francisco, uh, uh, San Francisco Bay Area, sorry, and joins us here in Toronto today to talk about the future of travel, messaging, sharing, how major brands are already using the technology, uh, the importance of personalization in the communication, and with what is in store for our industry in the future. So please welcome Rob Lawson. Thank you. Uh, hello, thank you very much for, uh, for having me. Thank you for a great uh, introduction. Um, I'm Rob, I'm from Google. I'm, I'm here to talk about business messaging. And really my role is to try and open up um, business messaging services to allow businesses to talk to, to their customers. Uh, and, and I've got a couple of things, sort of fairly new things that we're working on that I'm going to sort of talk to you about and show you some examples of that hopefully are interesting to you as, as travel professionals. Um, I don't have any paddles, but we are going to do a little sort of interactive thing to, to get started. So please uh, take out your phone. I'm imagining you've all got a phone. I'm guessing it's not very far away from you. Um, it could be an iPhone, it could be an Android, it doesn't matter. I want you to open the phone up, and I want you to find the, uh, the text messaging application, so the, the app that you use to send messages to your friends, your family, Maybe get some business messages, but you know the, the text messaging application. And think about where that uh, where that app is. Uh, and I'd like you to put your hand up if that app is not on the home screen of the phone, like the the sort of landing screen of your phone. If your text messaging app is somewhere else, put your hand up. Okay, we've got one, two, a, a few. So maybe you know I don't know how many people have. There's a lot of lot of faces out there, but you know maybe sort of you know one two percent of people don't have that text messaging app on on the home screen of the phone. So the rest of us do. Um, uh, and that's sort of my, my, my point one. The second thing is now open up that, the text messaging app um, and have a look at the, the, the most recent conversation, the message you sent or the, the you received most recently. That's either going to be the top or the bottom. And, and look at when that was. And if that was more than 24 hours ago, put your hand up. I can't see very well, but I can't see any hands. So, so pretty much all of us have sent or received a message in the last 24 hours. What about the last four hours? Put your hand up if it was more than four hours ago. A few. Um, more than an hour ago. A few more. But most of us have sent or received a text message in the last hour, and that app is on the home screen of the phone. And it's a sort of cheesy introduction, but that's my point here is, is messaging is really important. Like as, as consumers, we've stopped calling each other up. Uh, we've maybe stopped downloading apps, but we're spending more and more of our time in messaging. Uh, and Google recognizes that, and we're trying to open that up as a channel, not just between uh, ourselves as consumers, but something that businesses can use uh, in different ways. And so a couple of things. So the first thing I'll talk about is, is RCS, not a very sort of uh, sexy name for a product. But it's basically the upgrade to text messaging. So text messaging is SMS is the protocol. It's not a Google product. RCS is not a Google product. It's a, it's a telco industry product. So SMS, you get a message from, um, from an airline. You know, it's going to come from a number. It's going to come from a short code or a long code. It's going to be black and white. It's going to be no kind of images. You're just going to see some text, and you're going to have to understand. You have to read it and think, OK, this is probably from my airline. This is probably useful. Uh, it's really a very kind of simplistic medium. It's 27 years old. Uh, hasn't changed for 27 years. RCS upgrades that and makes it a sort of truly sort of engaging conversational platform with all sorts of features. So this is something that the uh, the handset manufacturers, the, the the telco companies have been rolling out. This is live uh, with Rogers in Canada. It's live with Freedom, uh, other carriers around North America, and is rolling out uh, around the world. So as consumers, it means that we can send uh, groups and do videos and all sorts of interesting things. But from a business perspective, we have a, a, a sort of separate set of tools that, that businesses can use that we call rich business messaging. Um, let's keep up with the slides. OK. Um, so you can see here, so this is uh, an example. You can see at the top, the messages come from a business. You can see the name of the business. It's verified by Google. You get a little shield there. 
You can send and receive text messages, and those can be as long as you like. You no longer capped at 160 characters, but now we have uh, richer elements. We have in the middle there what we call a rich card. So you can send a card that can be a photo, it could be text, it could be some combination of sort of assets like this. You can have a QR code, you can make it into a boarding pass, uh, information about uh, a restaurant, different things that we can do, and we'll see some examples of that. And then we have at the bottom these little sort of, sort of sausage shape uh, sort of buttons there we call chips. Those are interactive elements. So the user can, they don't have to type to, to engage with the conversation. They can tap, do I want to change my seat? Do I want to change my flight? Do I want to uh, look at the restaurant? Do I want to look at the spa? They can tap through um, uh, those experiences. So it's a, it's a fairly simple toolkit, but you can build some fairly interesting uh, consumer experiences using it. Uh, so let's start off looking in uh, hotels. So this is something that Four Seasons built. Um, this example is uh, Chicago, but they, they roll this out across uh, many of the hotels in North America. And it's a concierge service. So you check into the Four Seasons, you, you go through the process at the desk, um, and then you're in the hotel, but you get, and get a welcome message. So your phone buzzes, you've got this welcome message from the Four Seasons, and it's like a sort of concierge service that you can use to explore the phones, the, the hotel's services. So you can look, at, you can see those sort of cards there, you can swipe these. Do I want to look at the spa, the restaurants, um, the gym? Do I want to look at opening hours? Do I want to book a table? Do I want to see the menu? You can kind of drill into those things. So that's a great thing that you could do. You could be sitting at a a conference like this, and you could be thinking, I really want a massage this evening. How am I going to do that? I can't call the hotel, but you could be swiping through and not listening to Rob uh, and checking the, 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 the massage options and booking something this evening. So you could do that when you're in a taxi. You can do it at 2 o'clock in the morning when you're jet lagged. It's something that you can use as a consumer or as a, as a traveler uh, to really sort of enrich your journey without creating any kind of cost burden back on the hotel. You don't have to go and talk to the concierge. Uh, switching uh, to, uh, to sort of some more sort of travel examples. So this is two uh, rail examples. This is a, a big screen, but this is a huge room, and some of you are a long way away. So I don't know if you, if you can read this, but the one on the left is for, for uh, Japan Rail. This is a Japanese example. Um, where you know basically you can book, a, a book train travel. So you can go in and you can say, okay, I want to go to station A and I want to go from station B. There's location services inside messaging, so you can say, okay, I'm, I'm here, show me the nearby stations. It can then sort of give you, use the carousel to say, okay, here are some sort of times of different trains and some pricing for those journeys. You can select one of those. Uh, you can go through, and then you'll see as the, as the thing loops around, then you can pay for it, and you can pay for that using uh, your phone bill, using a credit card, using different options, all facilitated inside of messaging. Having then bought that thing, then it gets delivered back to me as a ticket. So I get my QR code, I can use that to scan in at the train station, I've got some information about the journey, some times, uh, some information, and that's all delivered through this conversational experience. So I haven't had have to download an app, it's all you know, delivered to me on the home screen of my phone. Um, on the right is, is Chicago Transit, a bit closer to home, which is more of a uh, you know, sort of similar functionality, but more sort of, sort of tuned to uh, a kind of commuter user experience. So this is somebody that maybe travels more frequently. They often go from work to home. So there's some sort of store here of, of, of sort of common stations. And you can see, okay, when's my next train? Where am I going to go? Yes, I'm one of my common stops. Where am I going from? Yes, a sort of a, a station. And then it gives me a carousel of these cards. Here are the next uh, three or four trains that serve that, that journey and, and the... Uh, are they on time? Are they delayed, etc.? So again, very simple, instant for the user to use. Uh, they can just open the phone on the home screen. They can drill in uh, and start finding out about their train journey. Uh, switching up again, looking at sort of air travel. You know, this is you know a couple of examples. The the Vueling is a European uh, example. This is you know often we find lots of the 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 businesses using rich business messaging a kind of upgrading an SMS experience. So maybe you use SMS today uh, from, a, from an airline perspective to say, OK, remember you're traveling today, check in, it's gate you know, G52. Um, your, your gates change, the flight's delayed, whatever it might be, might, might be delivered through SMS. That's very one way, it's very informational, it's very dry. Uh, and basically upgrading that with, with RBM. So here you'll see on the left an example of not just being able to tell people about the flight, but saying, Don't, and here you are, here's your boarding card, You've got everything where you need. So again, I don't need to go hunting for that. I, don't, I, know, I know where it is. My phone buzzes. I'm on the home screen of my phone, and there's my boarding card. Uh, the JetBlue example is a little bit more 
uh, interactive. And this is really about seat assignment. So I've booked my travel. Uh, I've confirmed that everything's great, but I haven't yet picked a seat. So then I get a message saying, hey, would you like to pick a seat on JetBlue? Uh, and then you can see as the thing loops around, it uses the cards to show me a map of the, of the flight. I can see which seats are available, which seats are, are unavailable. I can use the chips to pick the seat that I'm interested in. So I've now assigned my seat, which is great, but also clearly it's an upsell opportunity. At this point, you know, we can say, here's some advantages of some of these premium seats, and do I want to pay for those uh, and book that through, uh, through the messaging experience? Uh, last example is, is more on the sort of booking. And this is, this is a sort of nice example. Booking.com used the, the channel for a range of different things. This is uh, sort of confirmation messages. So somebody's booked some travel. They say, I think it's a, it's a hotel or some sort of accommodation. Certainly they've, uh, and then they send a confirmation. And, and, and the, the, the confirmation message has all the information they might need. So you've booked this date from here to here. Here's the address. Here's a nice picture of it. Here's the pool. Um, but the chips then come into play to start to invoke other elements of the phone. So for example, you can say, one of those chips says, do you want to add this to your calendar? Great, I'm just going to tap that. It's going to add it to my calendar. And instantly, I've gone from, from a booking to having something locked in my calendar. I won't forget where I'm going on that day. You also have, um, and this is typically sent the, sort of the day before travel, is show me this on maps. So I can just click, open it up on maps, and it's going to tell me, how do I get from here? I've got off the plane. How do I get my hotel? Just give them a link that's you know, instantly done there, and they can be delivered at the right time. Booking.com also used this as a sort of on-ramp into app downloads. So one of those chips is go and download, install the app. So I've, I've made the, the, the booking, but maybe there's some added functionality in having the app, so sort of shifting people from messaging which is the home screen of the phone again, into your app, where you can have that sort of richer uh, ongoing conversation. OK, so those are sort of a whistle-stop tour of rich business messaging, which is great for, for sort of outbound communications. You as the, uh, as, the, as the business, the enterprise, wants to reach your travelers. You have their phone number. You can give them information and sort of engage them in a conversation. Uh, but what about uh, the reverse? What if consumers what if travelers, what if, if, if customers want to reach out to you as a business? How do you facilitate that from a messaging perspective? You know, often we're left with having to call. Like there are, you know, hundreds of billions of inbound calls from from um, from customers into businesses every year. They cost about 1.3 trillion dollars. North America, the average cost of a, a, of a sort of business phone call is between $5 and $10, which sometimes is great. You want to talk to your customers, that's fantastic. But often, it's, it's just a burden. It's expensive for the, for the business. And it's painful for us as individuals. We're, we're all sitting in a, a conference. It's hard to go and make that call. But we could all make an asynchronous sort of uh, messaging sort of conversation with the business. So what is Google doing? Um, Google is at the head of, uh, of lots of sort of discovery journeys. You want to reach out to a business. Often you'll go to Google. You might not even think you go to Google. You just open your browser, you go to the URL bar, and you type in uh, the name of the airline or the hotel or, or whatever it might be. And then Google will throw up some results, and you'll click one of those. Often that's a blue link to a website. Often it's a phone, it's a phone button or a phone number. There's one US pizza business. You search for this pizza business. Um, Google throws up some results, and there's a blue call button. And you click that blue call button, and Google sends 60 million calls a year into that, that, that business of people calling to, to order their pizza on a Friday. Um, so how can we do a better job? How can we move out of that sort of uh, world that perhaps we don't want to be in into the world that we do want to be in? So Google, uh, if you can see the slides here, we're starting to add message buttons to search results. So you search for your airline. You search for the, for the hotel as well as providing links to, to call, to go to a website, we can have a message button there. You hit that message button. We open this conversational surface um, that allows the same kind of functionality. So it could just be one-on-one -on -one chat. You could chat with a support agent, or it could have functions. You can see here um, in, the, in the sort of middle there, you know, I can book a flight. I can check the flight status. I can sort of modify a reservation. So you've gone from Google search to a sort of conversational asynchronous uh, surface where you can have uh, whatever functionality that the business wants to have uh, to engage that customer. Uh, you know, we think that's really exciting. It's starting to move people away from you know, just sort of going to websites, going to calls, but having this sort of asynchronous, ongoing conversation. Obviously, once that conversation started, it's a two-way thing. You as the business can continue it. So maybe somebody's calling up to say, hey, how much is, you know, what's my baggage allowance? 
three days later they're flying, you can kind of contact them and remind them what gate they're at or whatever it is. So it starts this conversation that again you can have uh, with the user on the home screen of their phone. So two different things, like one is that sort of outbound rich business messaging, that's a very sort of, um, uh, I'd say it's an established product, something we've been doing for the last sort of 18 months and is really sort of spreading around the world. And then this last sort of search results uh, is something that we're just uh, sort of testing and running pilots with today. Uh, if you're interested in either of those, uh, very, I'll, I'll be doing a, another session in the, in the tech talk area, uh, I think at 11.50 today. So if you've got questions, happy to sort of jump into sort of Q&A there. Uh, but my email is also on the screen if you want information about any of these or we can uh, help connect you a partner to get you set up uh, to do business messaging. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you very much for your time.